to the vlog. It's week 57. No, it's week 58. It's Friday, 4 o'clock-ish. Hopping on a call with my man's Dan at 4.30. Last episode, I was talking about the book he gave me to read. I didn't read it all yet, but I'm like two over 200 pages into it. It's a lot of, you know, it's a lot of pages to read, man. I was stuck in court all night last night. Like, I can't be reading 400 page books in four days. Nobody got time for that. But what Dan don't know won't hurt him. No, for real. I have like, since I started reading, these are all notes that I've come up with or ideas generated from the book that I'll discuss with him. So even though I didn't finish it, a lot of good came from the stuff that I've read thus far. RIP, rest in peace to Avicii. He fueled a lot of my good high school and college benders, man. He single-handedly got us through weekends down the shore. In Seaside, Avicii was our lifeblood. And the song Levels, still to this day, probably one of the best songs at least of the last 20 years. That is just like the most feel good song ever. And it just reminds me, like, I don't really care. I wasn't the biggest Avicii fan, but you know, I think about people who cry when celebrities die and I didn't cry about Avicii, I'm not gonna, but it's not about like you knowing the celebrity or about you being close to them. It's like about the impact they had on your life, right? Like some of the passes, I don't know, I have no idea who, who he is as a person, but I recollect the songs that he put out and like the times that I had. I picture myself 18, 20 years old, driving down the shore with my friends, like blasting his music and just having such a good time. Had he not come around and not made music, I wouldn't have had the, that same like joy or, or happiness, you know what I mean? So I think about if there's ever gonna be a celebrity or someone famous that passes away, I'm cooking up, I'm about to get on a whole nother spiel about peppers and onions and shit too. I think about like, is there anyone that I would actually cry over? And I've actually thought about it and I mean, outside of like relatives and friends and family and shit, I think about Gary Vee is the first one that comes to mind. I know a lot of people will be like, really? Like why? But I, he's just made such an impact on me like mentally and towards where I've been in my life and a lot of decisions I've made up to this point to go out on my own is through him. And uh, he's given me a lot of motivation to do a lot of things in my life. So I don't actually know if I'd cry if he passed away, but I know he's had a very deep impact. I don't really know what I'm getting at, but I'm just thinking about like all the good times I had listening to Avicii's music. So RIP, and if you hear me sniffling, I I've been sick this week. I'm one of those people, I completely believe that your diet, like any sickness you get, whether it's cancer down to having a cold is cured by your diet and the stuff you, like, what do you, when people get sick and they just shove medication into their throat, like what do you think your body runs on? Your body literally runs on what you put into it. So when I'm sick, what I do is just shove the most amount of, like this was an entire pack of peppers and onions. You can see I had a banana down there. This entire pack, peppers and onions, gonna get a lot of vitamins, nutrients. I started eating fruit, like I don't care about like protein and any of that shit. I know Arnold will be rolling over in his grave right now. Your body literally runs on what you give it. So in order for it to get better, you start feeding it all these vitamins and nutrients, it's going to get better way faster and you're gonna feel a lot better because you're giving your body what it needs. It's going to be able to recover and repair its cells and break down any digestive issues that it's having. That just gets me angry. I don't know why that just got me so pissed off. So, it's Monday around uh, two o'clock, I think, and, and I'm on my way to the gym right now. I wanna experiment with something this week. I wanna experiment with a diet. This I wanna do a full week of eating vegan. I haven't eaten anything yet. I'm gonna go to the gym on an empty stomach. If I don't check back in with y'all for a while, it may have passed away. I actually always wonder too, like sometimes, like I'll go to the gym at like two or three o'clock, I'll roll out of bed and start doing work and stuff, and then I'll go to the gym later in the day and I still have like bedhead. I wonder if people like think I'm a piece of shit when I walk into the gym looking like that, and it's like two or three o'clock in the, in the afternoon. Anyways, yeah, so I wanna try out a vegan diet. I've always like thought about experimenting with different diets, you know, like 30 days of vegan or 30 days of keto or something, and that was, I was deciding between vegan and keto, and keto is basically keeping your carbs to an absolute minimum. Them. Just like high fat, high protein, and then all your carbs are from veggies or like trace carbs from those other foods. So I think I'm gonna experiment with vegan, and I don't really know anything about veganism. I have some friends that do it, so I might ask them. I just know no animal products, no byproducts of animals, so that's like no milk, no eggs, no butter, no cream, no meat, obviously. So it's everything like vegetarian, but also nothing from any other kind of animals. So no like fish, 
Or wait, can I eat sushi? Realistically, who gives a fuck about fish? There's like fucking 20 billion of They outnumber us. If anything, we should take them down. I'll update you guys throughout the week. So it's Monday right now. So from April 23rd to April 30th is when I'll do my week of vegan. And then maybe next week, I'll do a week of keto and let you guys know how that goes too. Um, I'll probably film more of my meals. I'm not really sure what I'm going to be doing in terms of like this. I like to have, keep like a high protein diet and I'm not really too worried about getting my protein in, but I'm going to have to stick with things like protein shakes for sure. So if any of you guys are vegan, please leave a comment down below and let me know some good recipes or meals or whatever. But I think I can get by fine. I eat tons of apples, tons of bananas. I just wanna see how it affects my energy levels, how it affects like just day to day, how I feel. So I'm excited to try it out. I don't know, could I, I could probably drink margaritas, right? What in there would have anything to do with animal? Tequila, triple sec. It's my only concern when I do these diets is like my drinking. I go out usually every weekend. Drinks get weird, man. We're, we're living in a weird time in 2018 where like, I don't know. Shit's weird. People are weird. You sure there are drinks with animal products in them? I don't know. I don't know what I'm fucking talking about anymore. So for marketing, I'll, I'll talk. I'll touch on marketing a little bit. As we get further into, I guess, the 21st century, if you want to call it. So it's 2018. Consumers and customers are very good at spotting advertisements and, and marketing. And not so much like, I don't mean like spotting like, oh, there's an advertisement, like obviously, but... Uh, in terms of like being scummy and trying to actually sell to people, people recognize that very quickly if your only intent is to sell. The interesting part about where I'm at in terms of my business is like, I'm building up a brand and awareness and I'm equally trying to turn that into a financial gain for me in terms of content like YouTube and fantasy football, right? That's teaching me the long game of building a brand. So when I do my marketing campaigns for my clients, I have experience in terms of building a brand, right? Because I'm doing it right now. I'm putting out these videos. I'm putting out my fantasy videos weekly, if not daily. Um, and my subscriber count is probably around like 5,000. By the end of the summer, I think it's going to be up to like 15 or 20,000. I'm not going to be someone who just like talks about and thinks they know what they're talking about, but I'm going to be living proof of actually doing it. Getting back to what I was saying, like in today's day and age of selling things, you have to, the only, the key to, to marketing is, is content and giving out value and building a relationship with the customer to the point that they trust you and they want to buy your stuff. I um, mean, that's what I'm doing fantasy football, right? I, I put out videos for three years now, just free value. And now I want to sell like a draft guide and I put it out for pre-order like two weeks ago and I priced it. See, this was a dilemma for me. Last year I did the draft guide um, and I priced it at $4.99. So compared to the amount of work and the time I put in and all that shit, it was like literally a steal for anyone who bought it. And I had about 200 people that purchased it, which is really cool to say, you know, I just did that from scratch. I found an online magazine software that I built it on. And yeah, I did that. So this year, you know, having learned from what I did last time around and having, you know, a better feel for what's going to sell and how to sell it and these things around, I am selling it at a price point of $19.99 right now. That's the pre-order price if you do it before July 1st. And I already have about 20 pre-orders. So $5 times 200 was about $1,000 I made off the draft buy last year. Now I'm selling it for $19.99 as the pre-order price, which is, you know, this is April right now. People don't draft until the first week of September. So there are months before this thing really ramps up, which I'm excited about. Cause like I said, I've sold probably between like 15 and 20 pre-order copies already. Um, I don't have anything planned out, but I figured I'd get it out there for people interested. They'd get a discount price. So if you think about it, right, the higher price point enables me to hit the same revenue mark at a much easier path. So 20 people times $20 is about $400. That's 40% of the revenue I made all of last summer. And right now it's only mid-April, right? 99% of fantasy football players are not watching YouTube channels about fantasy football, researching for their draft whatsoever. So there's plenty of potential in what I saw. I was nervous to make the price point higher. And that was one of the things my mentor, I guess, kind of helped me out with. God damn, this thing keeps falling off. My mentor helped me out with and told me that like, listen, you're providing a really good value. You put a lot of work into this. You should be pricing it higher. He's like, to be honest, you should develop a package or, or a product that you can sell for like a price point of $100. And that I'm, I'm a little nervous about, but when I think about it, maybe it's not a bad idea. And I'm trying to build something community-based because uh, like a month ago, I put out a video knowing that I was gonna make a product or service to sell this summer for fantasy football. And I put it out and I was like, listen, what do you guys want? Like, I don't wanna make a bunch of shit and spend a lot of time making something if it's not even what you guys really want. So I was like, do me a favor. If you watch this video, leave a comment down below. What do you want in a package and what would you be willing to pay for? When I think of fantasy football and like products or services I would buy, I would think of like analysis and numbers and stat sheets and breakdowns and things like that. What surprised me was the central theme of all the comments I got was some kind of community, like a private Facebook group or a private forum or 
you know, like consulting with me, like one on one, things like that. And I knew that was like a good idea, but I didn't think it was that good of an idea until I really took a step back and realized that like anything that's like successful is is pretty much community based especially when it comes to content. So that's kind of gonna be my plan of attack. I am gonna do the draft guide and I am gonna do a couple other things that have to do with like numbers and stuff, but my main focus is now going to be on providing people with like access to me. And you know, I'm still gonna put out as much free value as I have been over the last year, two years. I'm not gonna drop off in that, but it's just giving people what they want for a premium, like a, a paid price, right? Like draft consultant. And I thought I was the first one to think of this, but it, come, it turns out I'm not. There's a, a website that I actually stumbled across yesterday that was called draftdayconsulting.com and they're like pretty pretty popular and they charge people like 30 to 40 dollars an hour for their consulting services like in draft in season and things like that and that's exactly what I had in mind prior to even seeing that so I'm like okay so people are using this which is a good thing I'm not first to market but that's fine because I don't know you know like I don't I haven't captured any like large percentage of the market but it, it, it tells me that there is a market for this type of service um, which is good and it will sell so that's something that I'm gonna be really high on this summer and I'm excited to kind of roll it out I'm just in you know with all these ideas and projects it's hard to get all the logistics down because I don't want to release something and then it not be set up technically correct because you know like first impression is huge so if I want to if I'm offering something to someone they buy it and they have a bad first impression with the product you know it's like oh well this page isn't working and like what do I do here then they're gonna be like oh, I don't really want to buy anything else you know you want everything to be smooth and perfect and you want everything to work well the first time around so that you know any question marks they might have aren't related to that and that's like my biggest kind of issue right now is figuring out how I can make it really organized, really precise, really like risk-free for the client, I wanna say, or like the, you know, the users that would purchase it. That's kind of what's on my mind right now. Other than that, yeah, it's just a lot of future planning for the summer, which I think is gonna be a really, really big one. And uh, oh yeah, for this week, like the NFL draft is this week, so now is when things really start to heat up for, for NFL and, and fantasy football. So it's crazy that I have some videos out there that I put out like in the last month that I already have upwards of like three to five thousand views because no one cares about fantasy football right now but the fact that i'm getting those numbers is a really good sign for my projection of growth so i'm really like taking the holistic point of view that for a while i was just super into doing fantasy football and putting out content now i'm, I'm taking a much more business approach to things as you can obviously tell by this whole talk that I'm doing right now and I think like that's anyone building an audience or building a brand the foundation you have to do the foundation you have to put the long-term work in to build a loyal following and build an audience but once you start getting you know once I, I mean I'm at 5,000 I expect it to hit like I said 15 or 20,000 when you have that many unique audience members you should be able to monetize properly and you should be able to make some pretty good money off of that and that's where I'm at right now I'm in between the step of just like building the foundation and trying to really launch this thing into a business so so I'm just gonna eat an apple right now I don't think I have anything in my house that's somewhat filling that is vegan uh you know what actually nope we got a veggie burger I've actually had these before they actually taste really good so I can eat veggie burgers by the way my fridge is bare because my mom's in Italy she's been in Italy for the last two weeks so this is what happens when she goes away I just stopped caring about life pretty much so I can drink almond milk that's really all that matters to be honest I'm basically just gonna have to start eating salsa by the bowl this sucks how are people vegans? How are they vegans? At least I like apples. Tuesday morning. This is the first clips that I'm getting on my iPhone 8 Plus I had to upgrade yesterday. Last like four or five days, my iPhone 7, it just had no service. I bring it into Apple and they say, this is a known problem for the iPhone 7. We're gonna run a test. And if we run the test and your phone fails for this specific reason, then we're gonna send it in to the Apple geniuses and they're gonna fix it for you. And we'll give you a loaner in the meantime. They run the test and it doesn't fail, obviously. But like, this is the same problem that's been happening with a lot of iPhone 7s. So it's like definitely the problem, but I don't know, it didn't fail the test, it was bullshit. They were like, okay, so you have two options. You can either continue using the phone and hope the problem doesn't happen. I'm like, it literally just, it's been nonstop for five days. It doesn't make sense. And if it does persist, you could send it in to the genius people, but you have to pay a $315 charge or you can just upgrade 
and trade the phone in the iphone 7 in that you have and use it for trading value towards an upgrade i'm like all right whatever so the iphone 8 plus is like 800 bucks but you trade in i got like 300 dollars trading value for like 270 or whatever and um and then they split that into monthly payments and that comes with apple care so the video quality looks pretty cool right now I wanna, i'm not sure how the mic is i'm excited to use portrait mode on this bad boy and this is day two of being vegan i'll be honest with you i barely ate yesterday because i was so busy and i was in the app store for three hours almost by the time i got home um it was like 9 30 and I, i'm not gonna lie on the way home i was like thinking about all these places i want to stop and eat dinner and then uh i was like ah, i feel like i can't really get anything good at any of these places i ate like three apples two bananas that veggie burger thing i showed you guys yesterday um, that was actually really good. I'm gonna get more of those. This is gonna be a lot harder than I thought. I just have to figure out what I can eat. Like, what can I eat for? I, I can eat oatmeal, I think, and put some scoops away in there. All right, well, I'm gonna get the day started. Today's blogging day. Like that. It's my favorite day of the week. Just blogging. Snickerdoodle is my favorite flavor for everything. It's gonna be my hardest thing is to try to get protein in every day outside of whey. I hope this is gluten free. I mean, uh, vegan. It's gotta be, right? Yeah, it's good to go, right? It's good to go. Whatever, if it's not, then I failed already. So I just got done at the gym. I went to Trader Joe's. Here's uh, what I picked up. I got this protein bar first. Really hungry and I wanted to eat it on the way. I think I ripped it in half so I can't even see the brand. 200 calories, 11 grams of protein. That's what I usually look for if I'm buying a protein bar. I eat protein bars pretty often just because it's a quick snack and you know if you're on the way or you're hungry on the way to the gym or something, it's easy to pick up and, and eat. What I look for is a protein bar that has one gram of protein per, per like 10 calories. So basically like if it's a 200 calorie bar, you want 20 grams of protein, 100 calorie bar, 10 grams of protein, something like that. So basically, yeah, we're rolling up sleeves to get serious here. Oh yeah, because I realized that the whey protein I had this morning. So we're gonna pretend that didn't happen. I didn't realize that this was, um, I can't eat this because it's whey is like milk or something. So that's my only mistake this week, I promise. I just got strawberries, jasmine rice, it's in a bag, you just throw it in the microwave for a few minutes and it's done. Some guacamole. And these were the veggie burgers that I had. Like, I had one of these last night. They are Dr. Prager's or whatever. They're actually really, really good. They're like kind of sweet. I like them a lot. So I have a feeling I'm gonna be eating a lot of these this week. So Thai sweet chili version. I didn't even eat it on like a burger bun or anything. I kind of acted like it was meat and you can like cut it up and eat it in the salad. Veggie fried rice. This is actually not that bad. This whole bag, 210 calories, three servings. So this entire thing, this is pretty full, is about 600 calories whereas you got to be careful with rice like jasmine rice there's three bags in here right you would assume that maybe it's not really that big each bag over 400 calories and brown rice you know brown rice gets a gets a rep that's fucking bullshit first of all because they it barely has any more fiber in brown rice it barely has any more protein but it's always higher in calories too because it has more fat but you got to be careful with rice because the calorie counts are super high if you're not paying attention to them potatoes peppers onions man i'm embarrassed to show you guys this one meatless meatballs I mean, they look, it looks pretty good. I don't know if you can see that. On the back, that picture looks pretty fire. Peter Joe's meatless meatballs are a delicious meat-free substitute for any recipe that calls for traditional meatballs. Like, how how is this a fucking thing? I don't know. I'll, I'll let you know if these are any good. Um, and then I just bought a bunch of bags of these, and I've talked about these on my channel before. Trader Joe's, fire roasted peppers and onions. So I just bought a bunch of things that I knew were definitely vegan. These are probably, like, these aren't even meals. Like, what am I gonna do with, like, guac, peppers, and meatballs? But I figured I might as well be locked and loaded for the week. Sometimes when I'm hungry, I'll just make an entire bag of this. That's what I grabbed today. It came out to around 40 bucks between everything. Now I've also been loving these things. Starbucks has started to, and this is big, like the whole coffee industry is kind of moving this way. You'll see it a lot now in cafes and coffee shops and stuff. They're moving more into like to go products. This for instance, they have, they're serving like the cold brew. They have different styles of this too. They have like unsweetened black and then sweetened and all these different flavors. A lot of the, one, the ones that are pre-bottled like this are really fucking bad for you. They're like 250, 350 calories. So you want to stay away from like the flavor ones french vanilla with milk and latte and all that shit but they do have black ones 
which are very good. And I'm going to show you how to make like a very condensed calorie version of it. You have one of these and you can get these for like $2 a pop, which is less than the coffee that you would get at Starbucks. And a lot of the time they have them on sale for like a dollar or dollar fifty a piece. So I just take a cup, bing, bang, boom. I'm actually going to throw some ice in there first. One, two, three, four. I don't know if you're supposed to shake this one. I'll shake it. That, doesn't, that might be so dumb that you have to shake coffee. I'm going to pour it in. There's some room for almond milk. You know, that's my stuff. You're actually attached. I don't think I showed you that. I have a Mac, the, this phone case I got from this website called Show Off Your Life. It's like a Mac, they hit me with mad Instagram ads. I was like, damn, y'all hit me with them. taste my own medicine. It's a magnet on the back and it'll stick to anything. So you're actually attached to my fridge. So you're just gonna go for a little ride. Little milky. And I'm an unhealthy motherfucker, so. You know I rock with Splenda. Take two. I'm weird. I'll start doing like two, but I won't do two full packets. I don't know why. It makes me feel better about myself, like less disgusting. Mix it up. I'm telling you, this shit is really good. It's probably just as good as you would get like a very flavored coffee. And the coffee itself, like this thing is 10 calories a bottle. How much I poured in here was probably half a cup. So that was probably 10 calories or so. And then Splenda is obviously zero calories. So you're getting this for like 15 or 20 calories as opposed to getting something flavored, which tastes maybe just a little bit better than this. But I, I, in my opinion, it doesn't. It's a lot less like sweet and disgusting for like 200 less calories. That's a little, that's a little hack for y'all. But I highly suggest trying these. Oh, I also have, I buy these sometimes. Uh, the sugar-free flavored, which I know is probably just as bad as Splenda is. I don't know, can I eat? All right, I can't, there's no way there's animal products in here. So I'll usually get the French vanilla sugar-free one, but this was the only one they had in stock, so the caramel. You know, when you order at Starbucks, like one, two, three pumps or whatever, so like one, two, that's it. And that actually makes this taste like way better, a lot more sweet. I have such a strong sweet tooth, so most of the stuff I eat or drink, I love when it's sweet. I try to keep my, you know, if there's one, there's one overall mojo I have, slogan, I don't know why I said mojo, slogan I have when it comes to eating and, and losing weight or dropping calories, never drink your calories unless you're drinking your calories. Throughout the week, I will never drink something other than water or diet. This is the most, the highest calorie drink I'll have the entire, probably this entire month outside of alcohol drinks. Chop it up. I know this shit looks nasty. It tastes good. Pump some salad on. Probably find some dressing in the fridge. Yeah, what the hell is this? Tastes. I don't know about this life, whatever that is. I'm gonna throw these in a bowl. It's a salad. I put some uh, fat free balsamic dressing on top. Some peppers and onions. And now it's back to, back to work. Couple updates. You see this big ass screen behind me. I got a second external monitor. I had an iMac prior to this, but it was kind of shitty. So I sold it. I sold my MacBook Pro and my older iMac to get this one. This is the 2017 MacBook Pro. I wanted to get an external monitor, but at the time when I bought this, they didn't have any, cause this, the screen is like really, I guess like 4K retina and everything. So the external monitors they didn't have, or they didn't have them for like a reasonable price. You had to pay like 800 or a thousand dollars for a really good external monitor. At that point, you might as well just buy another fucking laptop. So I didn't buy them, but now they're coming out with a bunch of 5K displays and like like much higher resolution ones. So the 4K ones are dropping. I got this on sale for, I think it was like 170. I'm waiting for the cable. I didn't realize I have to have a cable that switches to a different cable and then plugs into this one. So I did overnight shipping from Amazon. I'm waiting for that to come up. So I'll show you how that looks. Hopefully this will be really good because it's great for one, like live streaming. So I could live stream from there and also look at that screen. And then just like writing blog articles and video editing and stuff like that. It'll be very helpful. Doesn't matter. Vegan, vegan. What do we got on that front? Oh, I'm definitely, uh, I definitely fucked that up a few times. I ate one of those RX bars that has all the ingredients on the front and it literally says egg whites on the front i ate one of them anyways not realizing that i can't eat egg whites i ate whey protein earlier and i ate an rx bar yesterday accidental all right otherwise i've actually been pretty good feel really good to be honest with you and i see the bloat like coming down in my face you can start to see a lot of water and a lot of like excess excess whatever leaving my body and 
And you know, a lot of these people, I feel like I've never talked to someone who went vegan and was like, oh my God, my energy levels are so good. That's actually what I found too. It's kind of the truth. And I think the reasoning behind it is when you start eating vegan, right? For me, I focus a lot on protein. When you start eating vegan, you naturally, to, to get in the same amount of calories that you eat, you end up eating a ton of like carbs and you end up eating a ton of preferred source of energy for your body, right? So you feed your body a lot of carbs where I would normally eat a lot of protein and the, the body uses those carbs a lot more effectively for energy than protein and that's a reason why I think vegan people probably feel more energy I also think that like when you eat a lot of protein it slows down your body because protein this is like a known scientific fact I'm gonna hit you with the facts only here when you eat protein um, it takes your body more time to digest protein and it takes your body more energy and, and time overall to break down protein as opposed to carbs or fats so when you give yourself like 50 or 60 grams of protein in a given meal you're normally going to feel like tired and sluggish and stuff and that that's the reason why. So when you cut a lot of that out of your diet, your body probably starts running a little more efficiently. I like it. Thus far, it's Thursday. This is the last day of the vlog. I'm going to continue this diet through Sunday. So that'll be seven days from Monday to Sunday. There's no reason why I'm doing any of this. I'm just experimenting. And as for the phone, the iPhone 8 Plus, I love this thing. This is the first time in a long time that I've upgraded phones and legitimately been like excited about the upgrade like i always get excited obviously when you get a new phone and you're like oh cool i went from the five to the six or the six to the seven this is the first time that like it's really noticeable the differences in terms of like the bigger screen how fast it is the camera it's a lot easier for me to do some of my work through here i answer a lot of my youtube questions on here now as opposed to my computer because it's so big and it's easy for me to do research in multiple tabs when i'm answering someone's like fantasy question so big fan of the iphone 8 plus tonight's the nfl draft last night i didn't film this but i was on a call with with three people. I, I've been talking about how I'm bringing on people for the brand to help me out with fantasy stuff this summer. And I got on a call with three of the guys that I'm bringing on. I think I'm, I'm taking on maybe like six or seven people in total. I've never done like a hiring process before. I don't know like how to onboard people. Um, I got on a Skype call with one guy who's very good with numbers in Excel, another one that's gonna be blogging for me, and a third kid named Kellen. He's younger, he's in college right now. He's kind of gonna be like my utility, like go-to guy. I had him working on setting up the podcast and I'm gonna be giving off work to him as as the summer goes by and I'm not paying them right now but depending on how it goes and depending on like the success this summer and just how the brand goes you know I, it's absolutely not something I would be out of the realm like if we develop a lot of products and services and they sell really well and we make a lot of money obviously I'd give them a share of some of the stuff that's going on if they put in the work of course and there's definitely potential for long-term employment in the future depending again how things go this summer so I'm really excited about that that was last night at like nine o'clock we have the NFL draft tonight which is dope I'm gonna be live streaming that I love live streaming live streaming is probably my favorite thing to do content wise like Sunday mornings last summer during football season when I'd hop on there at like 11 before the game started that was a lot of fun NFL drafts here baby we're on the live stream oh we on we're recording look at this little setup we got Sweet. spicy yeah your man crush Monday thinks these chips are spicy I'm your man crush Monday I'm not good with spicy food. What happened to Steve Smith? What do you mean, Steve Smith? People will be asking ignorant ass questions in my live streams. All right, so I gotta <clears throat> end this bad boy because it's actually Friday morning. I feel like I look like a uh, landscaper with these things on. These are my noise canceling headphones. So yeah, last night was the draft. I did a live stream for about four hours. That was pretty cool. And YouTube actually shows you the numbers of people that join. And for the most part, at any given time, I have between like 50 and 80 unique people in there. But over the course of the four hours, Pull it up more. Yeah, we had 1,600 people come into the live stream. So that was dope. I had a lot of fun, actually. So, exciting week. That was fun. I will leave you with this. Friday morning, I usually like to cut it off Thursday night, but I'm going to get this out because I haven't. I have to edit this video. I'm getting out like a recap video of the NFL Draft first round first, and then I'm going to edit this video later tonight. Get it out for tomorrow morning. But, as always, thumbs up if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. I leave for California next Thursday. So I'll be out there the last day of this next vlog coming out. I'll be on my way to LA. LA 3rd through the 6th of that weekend. And then I'm going to stay. I'm going to take the coaster down to San Diego and stay from like Monday to Monday. So I'll be gone for about 10 days. So the next vlog or two vlogs from now will be mostly, well actually only California stuff. So that should be dope. Excited to get back out there. Anyways, that's it. So I'll see y'all next time. Play, play